of Jesus Christ. That every pollutant, every contamination, every health harmful thing will, would be negated and neutralized in the name of Jesus. And healing and strength will come in increasing measure. Father, that your people will find strength in their physical man for the journey ahead. Just like Elijah ate and was sustained. Elijah ate heavenly food and was sustained. So, Lord, we partake of this heavenly feast that you prepare before us for our physical well-being and our spiritual well-being and for the well-being of our soul that everything that pertains to us that there will be nothing missing nothing broken nothing out of order but everything perfectly as you have designed and intended and desire for us we receive it in the name of jesus let's take and eat together Come, let us reason together that even though your sins might be as scarlet, I will wash them and make them white as snow. There is no sin too deep, too dark, that the blood of Jesus does not lighten, does not whiten, and does not cleanse and sanitize. So, Father, we receive a sanitizing of our soul and our mind, even of our bodies and our spirit in the name of Jesus. There's a lot of contamination in the world, in the earth, in the spirit that we bump up against. And so, Father, we receive a washing and a cleansing not just from sin, but from contamination. Things that have been tainted and poisoned. We receive freedom. We receive life and strength in our soul, in our spirit, in our inner man, in the inner workings of our being. May that blood flow to every crack and crevice Cleanse, sanitize, purify, deliver, set free, make whole, comfort, heal, restore, reconcile the blood of Jesus. Let's take and drink together. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. We thank you and we give you praise. Glory, 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 glory. Continuing our series on the God who heals, or the Lord our healer, I've kind of played around and swapped out the titles as I've posted them on Facebook and YouTube, but they're going all on the same uh, playlist as we go along in YouTube for people to be able to Uh, search and find all in one place to really receive an understanding and revelation of a biblical foundation because in these day this time and hour like never before we need to have a firm foundation of of what really belongs to us in Christ in the area of physical healing and whatever your experience has been in the past what And I want you to even approach it this way. Whatever your understanding about healing and miracles 
has been, I want you to wipe the slate clean as we have attempted to start with building blocks so we can have a firm foundation to place our faith on. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word. We need to understand what the Word says. We need to, if our faith is not built on the Word, if we don't have an understanding, then we can't properly build. If you don't have enough sense that it's not good to build on sand and it's the best to build on rock, then whatever you try to construct is going to fail. So you can have all kinds of notions and all kinds of ideas, but if you're not building a proper understanding upon what the Bible says, you're building on sand. You're going to miss it. And you'll see a greater manifestation of healing come and the miracles released in your life as you build your understanding of what God's Word says about healing upon what God says on healing. And we've attempted to come from the Old Testament we ministered from the New Testament and how Jesus was the picture of God's perfect will. In Hebrews, it says, Behold, I've come to do your will, O Lord, as it's written in the scroll. Jesus said, The things that I do, it's not me, it's not of my own initiative, it's the Father. So Jesus didn't work a miracle. Jesus never said anything unless he heard the Father say it and unless he saw the Father doing it. So God's design and desire is to bring healing. And we ministered from Isaiah 53, 52, starting the, at the end of 52 and on end of 53, about the perfect description and prophecy of what the Messiah would come to do and how Jesus perfectly fulfilled that. Written thousands of years before Jesus walked on the face of the earth. And it came to pass exactly as it was written. And this morning, I want us to go, though, back into the Old Testament as we begin to draw out some principles to understand a how to access healing, how to access and see the power of God work in our life. And this will apply to every promise that we have in our covenant and relationship with the Lord. Not just healing, but it applies to healing because that's part of God's promise to us. And then we'll draw from principles in the weeks to come in the New Testament, and we may go back and forth as we try to tie this together so you can have a firm foundation and understand that it is God's desire to heal and for you to be well in every case, in every scenario. There was not a case that ever came to Jesus that he turned them away and, say, and said, well, I'm a specialist, I only heal blind eyes, I don't deal with deaf ears. But every scenario that approached Jesus, that Jesus came across, a wide variety of types, neurological issues, blood issues, 
flesh, skin, muscle issues, every major category of the physical body Jesus dealt with, ministered to, healed, restored, worked a miracle. He even raised the dead. That should seal it right there. And as you lay a hold of these things, afresh and anew, and apply these principles, you'll see healing promoted in your life, take place in your life, and actually through these principles, though a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, it won't come near you. No matter what you're facing today, your tomorrow doesn't have to be like today, doesn't have to be like the series of tests or the regimen of medication that you've been on. Your tomorrow doesn't have to be like that. And we're taking our time and building our foundation because I know every single one of us need to have a proper understanding for the day and hour that we live in and for what is to come. We need the power of the Lord like never before. And we thank God for showing up. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8. The testimony, the account of the Shunammite woman. I, and I'm going to draw out some principles here, and I want you to pay close attention as we go through this. Now, there came a day when Elisha passed over to Shunem, where there was a prominent woman, and she persuaded him to eat food. And so it was, as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat food. She said to her husband, Behold, I perceive that this is a holy man of God passing by us continually. Please, let us make a little wall upper chamber, and let us set a bed there, uh, set a bed for him there, and a table and a chair and a lampstand, and it shall be when he comes to us that he can turn in there. One day he came there and turned into the upper chamber and rested. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What can I do for you? You sow, you reap. You've been careful for us with all this care. What can I do for you? She wasn't, she wasn't necessarily looking for anything because she goes on, or he goes on to say, would you be spoken for of the king or the captain of the army? And she answered, I live among my own people. She wasn't looking for anything to be done. And we can have the attitude of, well, I'm going to sow and I'm going to give and I don't have a concern about my reaping or my harvest or what's going to come back to me. But this is the heart and the nature of God that when you give, you shall receive. There's something that happens. There's a principle that is uh, shown here that even if you think you've got everything that you need, God still wants to bless you. I live, upon, uh, I live among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi said, truly, she has no son and her husband is old. He said, call her. And we had called her. He stood in the, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, at this, at this season next year, you will embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, O man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. The woman conceived and bore a son 
at, the, at that season the next year as Elisha had said to her. So we'll pause here. I want you to notice, and I highlighted this in my notes, the first three verses. Elisha passed over to Shunem. There was a prominent woman. She persuaded him to eat. And as often as, she, as he passed by, he turned in there to eat food. She said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God passing by us continually. Now let us build him a room. We have to perceive the anointing. The man of God represents, Elisha in this account, represents the power, the presence, the person of God and of the anointing. There's a principle that God wants us to recognize and to perceive ourselves. That if we do not, we, that what we perceive, that what we recognize, and what we honor, what we open the door for in our life from the Lord, He will pour out. There was the prophet passing by. He was going to continue to pass by. But she said, I perceive, I spiritually recognize the presence of God, the anointing, and I, want, I recognize its presence and activity in the earth, and I want it to come and dwell in my house. It's not enough to have a mental acknowledgement that it's God's desire to heal. We have to say, I want his healing power to reside in my house. We are earthen vessels. We, do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Not just recognize that God has the power to heal, but that we actually want his power to dwell and to come upon our physical being. Now, I know many of, this, uh, many of us know these things, but I want to minister in such a way to cover some basic things because there will be people that don't realize this. And I think it's a good refresher that we are reminded of, our, of ourselves, no matter what our understanding of the Word is, no matter how long we've been walking with the Lord, that what we perceive and what we honor, what we give place for, we attract to our lives. If we give place for sin, we will attract the demonic. If we open the door to the devil, guess what? He's coming through. We're to be the, our own doorkeepers to our soul, to our lives. And what we open the door for, what we allow in, what we permit, what we recognize will come in, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And it doesn't just, it's not just, you know, by chance that God's blessing or God's anointing or God's healing. You know, nobody's sitting in a church pew scratching the healing lottery ticket and saying, oh, look, God decided that I won healing today. No, it's provided for in our covenant. But we have to engage certain principles in our lives that honor and that attract that open the door 
Elisha was continually passing by, the woman perceived, the woman understood, the woman knew the presence and the power of God, and she said, I want that in my house. I want that for me. It's when you perceived Jesus, we use this example all the time, it's when you perceived Jesus as a Savior that while you were lost in sin and you had that revelation of the Son of God and what Jesus did for you and you said, I want to open the door of my life and I want Jesus to come in to my life and I want Him to bring everything that He has with Him into my life and clean this junk out. Forgive me of sin. Set me free from the power of the enemy. Give me a hope. Give me a future. Give me abundant life. As we invited and accepted Jesus into our heart, as we open the door to our life and allow Jesus to come in to be our Savior, we have to open the door of our life. We have to perceive that He is a healer, that He has the power to heal. We have to open the door in honor and recognition and allow Him to come in with the healing anointing. When the door was open for Elisha, he came in. And so when we open the door to the anointing of God and to the power of God, to the healing of God, that power will come in. And there are principles that help open the door, and we're going to cover some of those this morning. One of those principles is honoring the healing anointing, perceiving it, realizing it. giving place for it. She not only opened the door to Elisha and had him come in, and he would come and visit, but she said, actually, I'm not satisfied with just a little now and then one-hour fellowship time. She said, I want to build a place for him in my life. We can build a place for God's healing power to come and dwell with us. She said, I perceive that this is a holy man of God passing by continually. And let's interchange that holy man of God, prophet of God, interchange that with the anointing, the healing power of God. I perceive that there is the anointing, there is the healing power of God that is continually passing us by, let us make a room for him, and you skip to the end of verse 10, that he can turn in there, that he can come and reside there. When we honor, when we open the door, when we perceive that it is God's will to heal, when we perceive him as our healer, when we honor him by, uh, by uh, incorporating these principles into our lives, these principles that we are going to cover, then it's not just a hit and miss passing by of the anointing, and maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't, and if I don't, I'll just cope. But actually... The door and honor and recognizing the power of God swings the door of our lives open where He can come in and reside. And when God comes in to reside with His presence, He brings everything that He is through the door. He has labeled himself. 
we mentioned last week that, you know, you might pick a nickname for yourself because you want, you know, as a kid, because you want to be known as, you know, that kind of individual. You know, there's a reason why, you know, somebody might have the name Mad Dog because they might be a little crazy. I gave the, gave the um, instance where my uncle's nickname was Rat Man because he loved cheese so much. My father's nickname was, still is, Big Ride because he always drove trucks. So his friends nicknamed him Big Ride. And God said, I'm going to pick a nickname for myself that I want to be known by, that is characteristic, that speaks to something of who I am. And he says, I'm choosing the name Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. He's the healing God. And when we open the door to Jesus, when we open the door to the power of God, we don't just get this aspect or that aspect. We get all of everything that he is. The Holy Spirit doesn't divide himself up in parts and portions, and here's a little piece of this, here's a little piece of that. But everything moves in the room when we open the door. But in order to receive the benefit and blessing from that and those aspects of who he is as he's revealed himself, we have to give honor. We have to recognize it. We have to recognize that Jesus is not only a Savior, but he's a healer. And not just that he is a healer or the healer, but that he is your healer. He wants to be known as the God who heals. He wants that to be his reputation. Elisha was passing by, but it wasn't until that she perceived who he was that she went after a way to honor him. He was passing by continually, 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 continually. Her house was on his way. She kept seeing him, seeing him, seeing him. And then something within herself said, there is something about that man. I perceive. I have a supernatural. God has given me this realization that he's not just a passerby. You know, there's tons of people that pass by your house because that's their way to work, that's their way to school, that's their way to their friend's house, that's on their way. How many people had she seen pass by her house, but yet this time, this one, this Elisha, she perceived beyond anybody else she perceived that there was something different about this man. And she said, because I perceive that there is something different about this man, I want to honor him. I perceive the anointing, and I want to open the door to the anointing, to the power of God that is active in the earth. Elisha was active, passing by continually. Remember, this is a, he's a picture of the power of God, the anointing of God. The power of God is continually at work in the earth. Jesus said about the woman with the issue of blood, I perceive that someone has touched me because power has gone from me. And when you Understand it from the Greek. He says, the power that is continually proceeding, emanating, going around me, has left me, and someone has been healed. 
It wasn't just that healing just, just showed up. But there was a continual activity of healing that emanated from the person of Jesus because his physical being couldn't contain the power of God. There have been times when I've been in a service and just concentrating on the Lord or even just uh, even in a prayer line going up for prayer to receive from the Lord and just locked in with the Lord and then all of a sudden since this surge of presence and I take a peek out of my out of my eye, my closed eye, take a peek. And the minister is not down down the line ten people away. He's three people away. Because there is an anointing, there is a power that is continually at work in the earth that emanates. Now, how do we get the power of God that is continually passing by like Elisha that is continually at work? How do we get it to come to where we need it in our lives so God can do what he wants to do in our life? God wanted to bring blessing to the Shunammite woman, but it wasn't until she opened the door to the anointing, to the man of God, to the prophet of God, to the presence of God, the power of God that was continually at work in the earth. She could have had her miracle any old day, but it wasn't until she perceived, it wasn't until she made a place, it wasn't until she honored the anointing and allowed the anointing into her life. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Salvation has been ready for the taking for anybody that calls on the name of the Lord. Salvation grace, saving grace, has been continually active in the earth. But it, it's not until somebody perceives that Jesus is a Savior and they are in need, that they are a sinner in need of a Savior, and then they open up the door to their heart and their life and allow that saving grace to come in. It's continually at work. God's healing anointing, God's healing power is not just waiting up in heaven to lightning strike you. It's continually at work in the earth that as we draw upon and engage in these Bible principles that the power that is emanating, the power that is continually passing by, the power that's continually at work in the earth can be released, can be received. Let me put it that way. The power is continually at work, but you don't receive it until you open the door. Because if you think of it this way, as in, in a misconception of release, as if God is hanging on to it, not wanting to give it, but then, okay, fine, I'll give it to you like some nagging child that wants a cookie before dinner. I got, all these, I got all these blessings in the cookie jar, but you keep nagging me, so I'm going to release one to you. No, it's more like there's a buffet, and when you're ready with your plate, you go up and receive what has been prepared. That's the picture. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. It's a table of salvation. It's a table of blessing. It's a table of deliverance. It's a table of healing in the presence of our enemies. Despite the attack of the enemy 
against our body, a healing spread has been put before us. It wasn't until she perceived who he was that she, she, that she sought a way to get him to turn in to her house. She sought a way. He was, he was busy doing his thing, going about his day, going about his prophet's itinerary. This day I'm going here, that way, day I'm going there, but every, every, everywhere I need to go, her house is on the way. It wasn't until she prepared a room for him, it wasn't until she opened the door for him, Number one, that he was able to move in. And number two, that he was able to bring the blessing of God. That power was always available. But it wasn't always received. But she made room, literally, for the anointing to come and dwell in her house. And we have to honor the healing anointing and God's desire to heal in order to entertain him, in order to host his presence and his healing anointing, in order to open the door of access to the house of our life, we have to honor the healing anointing and God's desire to heal. Beyond what we don't understand about how everything works, we have to come to a a humble place of a child who would just come with a base understanding and a basic understanding that it's God's will to heal. Beyond what I can think, beyond what I can, beyond what confuses me, beyond what I don't understand, beyond beyond why did this one get healed but not that one, Laying aside, why was this one resurrected, but that one died? Setting those things aside and having a childlike, simple faith and saying, okay, I'm going to start back at the basics. I'm going to start with square one. And I'm going to come with a humble attitude and say, I'm going to start fresh in my understanding. I'm going to push aside the questions. I'm going to push aside the confusion. And I'm going to start and renew my mind according to the word of God. Go back to square one. God has revealed himself as a healer. There was no case that Jesus turned away. And I'm going to begin to honor the presence. I'm going to begin to honor the healing anointing. And I'm going to begin to say thank you for your healing. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for your healing anointing. And how do you, how do you honor the healing anointing? How do you honor God's desire to heal? It's by honoring the Word of God. And I know you can't, you can't uh, use the word to uh, define, you know, you can't use a word to define itself. You honor the Word of God. You give God's Word place in your life. 
I, and, and the way that you do that and can begin to do that is to take passages of Scripture that talk about healing, whether it's two or three verses or whether it's a whole account of a miracle. And you begin to look at that and read that and study that and appreciate the different aspects of what God is saying in His Word. And talking to the Lord about His Word. And talking to the Lord about healing and His desire to heal and, and your questions that you have. God's not afraid of your questions. Why this? Why that? Why not this? Why not that? It doesn't make Him nervous. Because you're coming with a heart that is teachable because you want to learn, you want to understand, so you can move from a place where things seem like they're not fitting, they're not working, on what parts of the puzzle that need to be turned around so they fit together, so now we can get a clearer picture. Honor those with that are in the healing ministry. I remember when I gave my life to the Lord, and I, I mean, I started immediately watching Christian television. I didn't immediately go to, go to church. That came later, because I said, well, I gave my life back to the Lord. I got the call into ministry. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've been watching Christian television. You know, it'd probably be a good idea if I went to church. But forgive me, I was young. I was only 16. <laughs> but I remember 6 o'clock every morning, Benny Hinn would come on TBN. And I would get up early and in preparation for going to school, and I would watch Benny Hinn for his program before the bus came. And so when you open the door to your life through, number one, taking up the Word of God, reading about miracles and healing, reading about it, taking up books that talk about it, watching and receiving uh, what the Lord has through the preaching and the teaching of those that have a ministry of healing, that's a way of honoring let me tell you, you, millions of testimonies of people that have been healed through not even being in a Benny Hinn service, but watching Benny Hinn on TV. Because they honored the ministry, they honored the word, they opened the door for healing to come into their life. They could have watched some other program and missed their healing. But because they honored the power of God and the healing anointing, that opened up the door for them to receive what they had need of. The anointing that you honor, you'll receive from. The ministry that you honor you'll receive from. You've received from this ministry here at this church because you've honored this ministry here at this church because you're here. You open the door in your schedule to be here. You could be in any other church receiving from what is offered through their ministry. And because, you've, because you honor that ministry, you'll receive what they have to offer. You would miss out on what God has to offer here. But you won't, and you don't, because you honor 
this ministry because you're here. Let me put it this way. You can't taste a steak if you're eating salad. You can't receive from something that you're not putting in. You can't receive from this ministry if you're going to another church. You can't receive from another church if you're going to this one. The question is, you have to ask yourself, Lord, where do you want me to receive from? He's brought you here because he has something for you here. So what you honor, your life is opened up to. What you give place for in your life, you will receive from, whether it's the good, the bad, or the ugly. So be careful of what you honor. Be careful of what you open your life to. Somebody could have poisoned your food, but it wasn't your intention to get poisoned. But because you consume it, you get poisoned. That's the way this world is. What you're not intending to get you're not intending to get poisoned. But what you open your life to, what you receive in, will either determine greater blessing or a harder time. Let's go for the greater blessing. What you honor, you'll receive from. What you honor, you open the door of your life to. It comes through that door and makes residence and dwells in your life. If you honor the healing anointing, if you honor the promise of God, if you desire that for your physical experience and you begin walking in these principles that we are covering in this healing series, then you will find healing dwelling in the open door, in the open place that you've built in your life for it. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you that it is your desire to heal because you not only have the power to heal, but because you are healer. You are healing. Healing comes in your presence. Healing comes with your presence. It's part and parcel. It's DNA. It's, it's the molecules that make you up healing it's the neutrons and protons. We can't get away from it. But as we honor that aspect, as we honor that makeup, we open the door for a greater experience and greater blessing of your healing, anointing, and power. So, Father, I pray that as your people have honored your healing anointing this morning by receiving your word by the hearing with the ear their natural ear and receiving it, it into their hearts in their inner man I pray father that healing will take place in their life that sickness disease and discomfort everything that would harm their health would be removed and destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every contamination would be neutralized in Jesus' name. Father, we give place, we honor you, we give you special recognition. We perceive that there is the active power of God to heal in the earth. And Father, I pray that as we move on in, in teaching, that you will help us to construct an upper walled chamber in our lives for that power and that anointing to come and dwell in us, that we might receive blessing, that we might receive benefit, 
that we might receive healing, health, and strength, and long life. We thank you in advance for taking us by the hand, for guiding us, for teaching us, and helping us to understand. I thank you that pieces of the puzzle that were fuzzy and not clear before will make a clear picture as you teach us, as you unfold and expound and explain these things and bring them into reality, the reality of our physical man and our physical experience. We thank you, Lord, for your great love for us, that you take the time to explain and to teach us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Offering will be received in, the, in Tanya's hand in the back pew. <laughs> Make checks to the church, not to Tanya. <laughs> you can give it to Tanya, but don't give it to Tanya. <laughs> we love you.